This video is published under the Creative Commons license BY and CSA, which means attribution, non-commercial and share-alike. Third-party material has been used for which the permission is specified explicitly for every diagram, photograph or whatever has been used. Please mention the author as Andreas Pfennig, Products, Environment and Processes, Department of Chemical Engineering, Université de Liège, Belgium. A disclaimer applies. Welcome to this first video in a lecture series on thermal unit operations. In this first video, I would like to give you a very brief first introduction into the topic. Thermal unit operations relates to chemical engineering and chemical engineering being that science or that engineering science that deals with converting material from one structure to another chemical structure, mostly by chemical or biochemical processes. One task within this overall uh, engineering science deals with the thermal unit operations. Thermal unit operations being used to separate mixtures. We will work that out a little bit more in detail in the next slides. To give you a very first example, you start out, for example, with some fermentation broth. You have converted some sugar-containing mixture by microbes into some low concentrated alcoholic solution like a wine or something like that, or even lower concentrated. And then you perform distillation in order to get a final product, say, your whiskey. And you do that by distillation. This conversion step is distillation. And actually what you do, you separate your alcohol from the rest of the mixture and that concentrated mixture, or that solution in alcohol, highly concentrated in alcohol, that's your final product. And that's actually what thermal unit operations are dealing with. So, Thermal unit operations deal with the separation of mixtures. This is spelled out a little bit more in detail in this slide. So the goal and the, or the task of thermal unit operations is to separate multi-component mixtures to either obtain desired products like the alcohol solution, the highly concentrated alcohol solution, or to remove undesired or harmful components. Well, for that I have given an example already, but where do we remove undesired or harmful components? For example, if we have some flue gas and before we want to deliver the gas into the atmosphere, we have to take out some of the components so that it is sufficiently friendly to the environment. So any toxic components should be taken out before we deliver that into the environment. Another thing that can be dealt with here is wastewater. Wastewater sometimes contains um, toxic components that are even detrimental to the biological step in the wastewater treatment plant. So even before delivering the water into the wastewater treatment plant, you have to take out these toxic components specifically after some chemical engineering process. And that means that you have to separate that. And that's also done, of course, possibly with thermal unit operations. So this is a ta task separating multi-component mixtures into well, certain fluxes, certain streams that are enriched in some components or depleted in some components. The fields of application are, well, you guess from what I have told already, chemical industry, petroleum industry, of course, in petroleum industry, distillation is one of the major separation steps that is used over and over, over again within a refinery. Food production, alcohol production, for example, but also on the other hand side, you possibly did some separation already this morning, I don't know, perhaps you brewed your coffee or your tea and what have, you, what have you done there? You had your solid raw material, you had hot water and what you then did, you added both and what you did, you extracted the aroma component and the caffeine from this solid material into some aromatic liquid and the rem remainder you threw away, presumably. Perhaps uh, you use it as fertilizer somewhere, so you reuse that, but your aroma component is not anymore contained in that. That's the goal, so to speak. So you separate two components, the solid material and the aroma and the caffeine, from that starting material. So you are expect expert in thermal separation processes already to a certain extent. So in food production, but in food production, so just that. Another example is, for example, to separate the aromatic components and the spicy component from hot chili pepper. And that can be done as well by extraction. Then in the area of healthcare and pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals can also be produced by fermentation steps, for example, so by biotechnological means or chemically. And again, you wind up with a mixture in the end where you take, want to take out exactly your pharmaceutically or your uh, 
chem um, medically active component and so that you can produce your tablets afterwards and that of course needs separation steps. Healthcare products as well. Environmental technology refers to the flue gas and the wastewater topics I mentioned before and actually there are many other fields of application but these are just the major ones. Now I would like to put the thermal separation steps a little bit more into the relation of the all other steps and as you know as chemical engineer uh, overall process is usually separated, split into individual process steps. And this is shown here just for uh, three exemplary steps. On the one hand side we have the central part which is our reactor and actually usually everybody would regard that as the essential and most important part. The reactor usually operates with a catalyst so there is some feedstock coming into the reactor and that is then catalyzed by the catalyst so the catalyst speeds up the reaction so that the efficiency increases. But unfortunately a catalyst is a, something that is often relatively delicate. So some of the components in the original raw material may be detrimental to the catalyst, so-called catalyst poisons. Often sulfur containing components or even carbon monoxide depending on the specific catalyst properties may be detrimental to the catalyst. So deactivate the catalyst. And so you have to take those components out of the raw materials and deliver that as waste or possibly you can do something else with that, use it, reuse it, for example sulfur containing components could possibly be reduced, uh, reused um, to a certain extent. So you have a separation process over here. On the other hand side, after the reactor you usually don't have a single component. On the one hand side there is some unreactive raw material still contained in that flux and that means you want to separate that to recycle that you want to reuse it so that it gets a second chance to react. On the other hand side you often have not just one product but you have a wild mixture depending on your reaction but very often you have a variety of components of that wine that you have in here. So you have your products, you have some byproducts. Byproducts means actually some other components that you still want to use and they usually have a slightly higher concentration than the remaining components which you can only regard as waste. So those you can use energetically but you can't use them on a material basis anymore. So you can burn them for example to use the energy but that's it. And so you see if you look at only these exemplary steps, these three steps, you see that one out of three is only the reaction and two of these three are separation processes and actually if you look in the details this is possibly just one piece of equipment and for a separation process separating many components you often need more than one piece of equipment. And that means that the separation process are more expensive in many cases with, uh, as compared to the reaction step. One claims that usually roughly 80% of the investment as well of the operating cost can be associated with the separation steps in an overall process. And you see that's quite a lot. And that means that on the one hand side you can gain a lot if you do it right but on the other hand side you can also lose a lot, lose a lot of money. So the process can overall become economically infeasible if you don't design your separation processes in an optimal way. And that's exactly the goal of this lecture, to teach you how these separation processes can be designed in an optimal way. Designed optimally with respect to some theoretical aspects as well also practically how to really build or to design the internals of the corresponding pieces of equipment. So which pieces of equipment are available, how do they look like and how to design these internals to select them and to design them. So for that I uh, want to tell you something in the following videos. Now I would like also to give you some example and this is here a picture of a refinery and you see well many vertical tubes and some of these vertical tubes are now separation processes. These for example look very much like distillation columns. Some of the vertical tubes are also chimneys but uh, for these at least one can say pretty for sure that they are react, uh, distillation columns. Some others may be reactors but uh, in ref a refinery the majority of steps is actually distillation steps and you have some reactions to convert uh, large molecules into smaller molecules that you can then separate and use for specific purposes the cracking step in that context. 
Okay, so that gives you a first idea of how these pieces of equipment look like. Very often they are vertical tubes, sometimes they are horizontal tubes, other types of equipment are possible and we will discuss that later in this lecture. So with that I would like to summarize those things that I have told you in this very first video. On the one half side I have shown you that thermal separation processes are important and integral part of many processes in many industrial branches. And the optimal process and equipment design is essential and it's essential of course for the economic feasibility of your final product that you want to achieve. With that, thank you very much and I hope to see you again in the next video.